is creatine safe? Should I be taking it? What kind should I take? We are covering all of that in this video, including if it is safe for pregnant and breastfeeding women. This is a question that I am asked in the DMs probably five times per week. So I figured it was time for an updated creatine video. I have an older one on this channel, but we are leveling it up and adding in some new things. First things first, before you take any supplement, it is important to know what it is and why you should be taking it. Don't ever just blindly take things because your favorite influencer is taking it or because you heard that you should. Do your research. Let this video help you decide if it's for you if you should pass on it. And also, no supplement is necessary. There are things out there that are going to help you and benefit you in your health and fitness journey. I would argue most of them are probably not going to do very much if you have not mastered the basics first. What are the basics? Following a proper strength training program that implements progressive overload and being consistent with that for longer than a month. Dialing in your nutrition to meet your individual goals and to support your healthy lifestyle. Getting movement outside of the gym. You're not just working out and moving your body for one hour per day and sitting the entire rest of the day. Your mindset is in the right place in regard to your health and fitness. You have a healthy relationship with food. You have a healthy relationship with exercise. And lastly, you have set up some intentional daily habits that add value to your entire life. If those sound familiar, that's because those are our five pillars in the SCE method. That's what we use to help all of our clients. But to get into the creatine video, number one, what the heck is it? Creatine is produced in your liver from amino acids. It's something that all of us already have in our bodies. So by supplementing it, we are just boosting the amount of creatine that is already within us. Creatine helps with exercise performance by rapidly increasing energy in intense activity. So it essentially works by giving you enough energy to perform at a more optimal level. Benefits of creatine include increased strength and power output. So doing more reps or simply increasing that power output, which allows you to lift heavier, get stronger over time. Because when you can lift heavier and perform better, there is a stronger stimulus to grow. Number two, it can increase lean body mass over time with a proper strength training program that implements progressive overload. You cannot just take creatine and expect to see lean body mass increase if you're not strength training the right way. Lastly, if you are somebody who is vegan, supplementing with creatine is going to be super beneficial for you because chances are your creatine stores are already a lot lower than somebody who is not vegan because we get a lot of our creatine from eating meat too. So if you're vegan out there, Creatine is definitely something I would recommend supplementing with. The number one question that we get, is it safe? For some reason, somewhere along the line, creatine sort of became known, almost comparable to a steroid. Creatine is not a steroid. It's never gonna be a steroid. It never was a steroid. It's not anything magical that's gonna give you a quick fix. And honestly, it's not even something that you are going to immediately like feel a difference from. You're not gonna get a boost of energy when you drink your creatine. It's not pre-workout. It's not gonna be something that you immediately feel. It works by helping you improve that energy over time. So yes, it is safe, Obviously, it's already produced within our bodies, but also it is one of the most research-backed supplements out there today. We have tons of data surrounding creatine. However, since our supplement industry is not regulated, I highly recommend looking for a third-party tested brand of creatine, and we'll talk about what kind to get here in a second, but you want to make sure that whatever supplements that you take, they are using a separate lab to basically test and make sure what's inside of the supplement is what's on the label and not all supplements do that. So regardless of what supplements you take, make sure the company that you choose is third party tested. All right, what kind of creatine should you take? There's a bunch of different kinds out there, but the one that we have the most research on is creatine monohydrate. So any brand that is third party tested and is giving you straight up creatine monohydrate is a go. That is the best form. You don't need to waste your time with any other types out there. How much should you take really depends on how big of a person you are. Anywhere between three grams to five grams per day is going to be the range recommended for most people. I personally take about three to four grams per day. I don't weigh it out, but I kind of just fill my scooper 
75% full, <laughs> um, but somebody like Josh takes five grams per day. Sometimes you can take even more than that. It really depends on how heavy you are and how big of a person you are. You do not need to load it unless you want to saturate those cells as fast as possible. I would probably recommend most of you guys listening do not load it because when you do, it can give you some GI distress, which we'll talk about here in a second as far as creatine makes me watery or bloated. You can just start taking three to five grams per day wherever you sort of fall on that scale and just be consistent with that and over time you will saturate those cells. Does creatine make you retain water? In short, yes, but not in the way that you think. So creatine works by pulling water into the cell or pulling water into wherever it's going. In this case, it is your muscle cell. So it pulls water into the muscle site, which is something that we want it to do. That's how it works. A lot of people think creatine makes them bloated or watery or just fluffier, but if that's happening to you, it's more so likely that your body composition is not where you want it to be yet. You might have a little bit excess fat over the muscles that are giving you that bloated, watery, fluffy appearance. There's a lot of words we can use to describe that. So that's typically your body composition just not being where you want it to be. Um, but creatine is not gonna make you look bloated overall. Like I said, creatine can, for some people, give them some GI distress. So in that scenario, because your gut is not super happy, it can make you appear bloated here. And if that is happening to you, something you notice after taking creatine is your stomach is upset, what you can do is either decrease the dosage. So if you are taking five grams, maybe drop down to three and see if that helps. You can spread it out throughout a longer period of time. So throughout your day, so if you put it in a refillable water bottle. You can kind of sip on it throughout the day. Or sometimes it's just simply a case of making sure you're hydrated enough and drinking enough water throughout your entire day when you're taking creatine. All right, lastly, the question that everybody is wondering, is creatine safe for pregnancy and is it safe for breastfeeding? As of right now, at the time of this video in early 2024, we just do not have enough research to say Yes, it is fine. No, it is not fine. It, there's just no research done on that right now. Based on everything else that we've talked about in this video, I think it is clear that we know creatine is deemed safe. Again, it is something that we create in our bodies. So I think this is something that you have to sort of figure out if it aligns with what you are trying to accomplish if it aligns with you individually and it's going to be different for every single person we've had clients take creatine throughout their entire pregnancy and postpartum journeys and are totally fine babies are fine everything is great we've had people opt out of it throughout pregnancy and maybe just do it for breastfeeding which is what i personally did um, and we've had people just stop taking it all together so there's no one right recommendation that i have for you it really just depends on if it's something that you personally feel comfortable with, if it's adding you any amount of stress, I would say probably not worth doing. Um, and also just, is it something that aligns with your lifestyle and goals? You can always start taking creatine again afterwards and it will still do its job. So it's really just an individual decision, something that you can ask your doctor about if you're unsure, but at the end of the day, it is up to you. I personally opted out of taking it throughout pregnancy not because I was scared of it or thought it was gonna be unsafe for the baby or for me. I just was not in the place to remember to take it every day. I was barely remembering to take my uh, prenatal vitamin every day. It just wasn't something that I deemed valuable at that time. I was still training hard. It didn't affect me as far as losing muscle mass throughout my pregnancy. I maintained, if not gained, strength throughout pregnancy this go around. Um, and then I started taking it again around, I wanna say three months postpartum, still breastfeeding. It did not ever impact Cora as far as getting through my milk. Again, because we know it's something that we likely already have good levels of, especially if you're eating meat and if you're somebody who gets a lot of creatine from food, that's really no different than supplementing it. So for me, I decided to just give it a go and it's been going really well. I feel really great in the gym. I'm gaining muscle again, I'm gaining strength again, and again, has not impacted milk supply or Cora whatsoever. So for me, that was my decision and just feel like it's helpful for me to share that with you guys. Um, but ultimately, it just comes down to what you are most comfortable with. So that is the creatine video. I think that answers a lot of the common questions surrounding it. 
I personally take the first form brand still anything purely creatine monohydrate by a third party tested supplement brand is perfectly fine. The other perk of creatine is that it's pretty affordable. It's one of the cheapest supplements out there. So in my opinion, when you're factoring in all of these things, it really is something that you can take and it's not gonna hurt you at all. Um, and most of you are gonna see a great benefit from taking it over time. That's the creatine video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments and I will see you in the next one.